we start by wishing all of you a very very happy new year so good morning students members of the faculty members of the staff especially a very warm welcome to parents who have joined us today my team good morning and a very very happy and healthy 2021 to you every year lakhs of students graduate from every part of the country with big dreams aspirations and hope some go on to lead great companies like our guest today while some go on to make their own company some make our world a much more beautiful place with their art and their music while some dedicate their life to bringing cheer to someone who does not have much in life some make the world of science Shine, shine with the luminescence, some engineer, a more safer and a comfortable world for us. Some leave their homes and fight for our freedom on the borders, while others write with such passion and bring freedom to our minds, while others ensure their families are looked up. Whatever you choose to do, I know you as the young will join the world with your idealism and your passion and make it a much better place. However, on your journey, there are some people who will, who will play a crucial role. Your parents, your teachers, and most of all, those people who have walked this path before. You can learn from them, you can talk to them and hear them and make decisions based upon what they teach you. With this, thought the CDC team has brought to you Synergence, the CDC week, the careers week, which allows you to meet and interact with leaders from across the fields. Attend workshops, which will help you share your careers and a lot more. The Synergence week is a prelude to the series of workshops and career sessions, which will now be a feature of every semester. We are proud that this year, Synergence the Career Week is featuring in its opening leadership session, Mr. Suresh Narayanan, CEO and Managing Director, Nestle India. With that, let me quickly introduce to you Mr. Narayanan before he takes on and delivers today's keynote uh, session. Mr. Narayanan today will be talking about leadership sessions, lessons from the 40 years of of a fantastic career that he's built. Reading his profile would not do him justice. You all have known him. You all have read about him. He's somebody who's an alumnus of the London Business School. He's an economist from the Delhi School of Economics, a master's from there. He's got more than roughly about 40 years of experience. He's held leadership positions across top organizations like Nestle, which he's leading right now. Colgate before that, and he started his journey as a management trainee as an economic postgraduate at Hindustan Unilever. There's a lot about him that we don't know. What we know is that he's helming one of the biggest and one of the bestest companies to work for. He is known as somebody who leads not only his team to excel, but to excel with a heart, with values and ethics. With that, let me now ask Mr. to take today's keynote uh, session for Synergence the Career Bit. Over to you, Mr. Narayanan, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Anubha, and uh, uh, good morning to, to one and all, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ghosh, uh, for uh, inviting me to uh, Shivnara University uh, to really uh, share with you uh, a few thoughts and a few perspectives on uh, my own uh, my own journey. Um, obviously, you know the purpose. Uh, we are on a nice, cold, crisp morning of uh, the fourth of January. Uh, this is a start of hopefully a transformative year. We've all uh, been through a year that uh, I read this morning. Uh, someone said, uh, "Don't talk about the past year, uh, but think about." and yeah, dream about uh, the year to come. So therefore, I think I think it's important for us to, to look at our own lives in that perspective. And if I may just request, uh, uh, Anubha, if my presentation can be put up, I think Mohit is the one who's going to be coordinating it for me. I think it will be 
it will be very useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, so my young friends, uh, the faculty members, pair, parents of those who are uh, studying at Shivnada University. Uh, my purpose here is not to give you a lecture on leadership and leadership uh, management and management of organizations. Uh, I think I think that is not the purpose of, of, of today's uh, today's session. Uh, today's session is uh, in as much as uh, I hope it is engaging for you. Uh, it is also uh, important for me because uh, every human being reaches a stage in their lives uh, when they have passed and well passed the halfway mark of their uh, useful contribution on the planet. And uh, it is time for them to then reflect on what is it that they have done? What is it that they have achieved? Uh, what is it that they would like to do? And what are the lessons that they have learned that could be of use uh, to youngsters who are also following in their uh, career paths uh, to make a difference to humanity, to make a difference to their own families, to society and to their countries? Uh, so mine is a perspective of that kind. It is a perspective of an individual. Uh, it is not a, it is not a gospel truth that is written by a Harvard professor or by an IIM Ahmedabad professor or indeed by a professor at Shivnada University. Uh, it is a personal perspective. But I do hope that this personal perspective uh, gives you an inkling of uh, what lies ahead or what could lie ahead. Uh, your context is going to be my young friends very different from my context. Uh, I have been uh, 40 years uh, working. Uh, you have not been uh, as long in the planet, probably been spent about half that time that I have been working. Uh, you have been uh, from birth till uh, till today. So I have seen a lot, uh, but probably what I will see in the future will be very different from what you will experience in the future. And I think that is the important uh, perspective to always keep in mind. So I'm sharing here with you some lessons that I've learned. I call them the 10 C's because it's easy for me to re remember alphabets. Uh, rather than remembering uh, big statements, alphabets are easy. ABC is, is, is easy. Uh, it's simple. And uh, what I will be sharing with you uh, are more perspectives. So please don't expect some Einsteinian uh, uh, spotlight on uh, how the, the world is going to evolve or how the world has evolved or indeed uh, any uh, big uh, philosophic treatise like a Bertrand Russell, uh, or indeed by uh, Dr. Radhakrishnan or any of these great uh, scholars. It is more a, a person who was an ordinary man, uh, who has tried to do things to the best of his ability and has come thus far. And uh, it is purely in that perspective uh, that I would request you to take, uh, take whatever I'm, I'm talking about uh, today to you. Uh, if you can move to the next uh, next slide, please. So, uh, my young friends, I think you know we are talking here about about you. We are talking here here about what is it that you would like to do with your lives. You are all young, uh, as Anuba rightly said. Uh, you've all been blessed to be born in good families, uh, in families where uh, education matters, where culture, where discipline. Uh, where Tehzeeb, uh, where, where Niti and Niyat are both important, and where uh, each of your parents has always had one dream for you, uh, and that is that you be useful, conscientious, honest, ethical, and productive citizens of this country, and also useful to your families and to society at large. That's about the only hope and prayer uh, that we have as parents, and I'm myself a parent, and that's the only dream that I have uh, for my own child. You also benefited from uh, the enormous uh, inputs uh, and weight that uh, Shivnada University has brought to you. Uh, remember that uh, the founder of this university, of whom it is named, uh, he's himself a man uh, who was an ordinary man who went on to achieve extraordinary things. And one of them is, of course, the setting up of the university. So I just want to tell you one simple message in life. Never think of yourself as being ordinary. All of us are born with unique skills. But our backgrounds may be quite average. I myself come from a very middle class family. I, I am the son of a, a technocrat and a homemaker. 
uh, who believed in the power of education. And uh, they spent more than half my father's salary on educating me. <clears throat> sent me to the finest school, a school called Rishi Valley, which is uh, in the south. And uh, probably the finest experience that I've had in my, in my life that has been formative uh, to whatever I've become. Uh, given me the best that they could and uh, thereby given me the values and given me the purpose that has defined my life. Uh, so it is the story of an ordinary person uh, with some abilities that may not be exactly ordinary at all times, uh, who has through his own work, through great blessings and through enormous support from a team and from individuals and from friends and from well-wishers, achieved whatever little he has achieved. Uh, so it is not a story of being born to richness, born with a silver spoon in the mouth, or indeed uh, a background that is necessarily the most, uh, most affluent. It is an ordinary middle class home with very middle class values. Uh, that's what I cherish till today. And that is what I will always cherish about my parents for ensuring that their son has the feet on the ground and not the head in the skies, uh, because that doesn't always help unless you have the feet on the ground and your head also a little above that so that you're able to see clearly, but are not carried away by the perceptions <clears throat> of glory or by the perceptions of grandeur uh, that you are not born to. But what is it that is important for you at this stage? What is important for you is, my young friends, you are at university, but the clarity of who you are, what do you believe in, and what do you want to do with your lives? This is not an ordinary question. This is not a question that your professors will help you to, uh, to, to answer. This is a question that you have to answer. This is not a question that your parents will answer on your behalf. You will have to answer. This is not a contemplation that will be done by individuals other than you. They might help you with a structure. They might help you with a process. And yet you will have to come to that clarity. And that clarity is extremely important because ultimately the course of your life will be determined by the decisions and by the steps that you take today. Tomorrow is built on the work of today, which means keep clarity at the back of your mind. If you want to be a great author, as indeed Professor Ghosh said, there are people, and Anuva said, there are people at your university who write very well, uh, who probably are very good in technology, are very good in, in, in interpersonal skills, are very good in analytics, are very good in art, are very good in music. Go for it. Because what is important is the clarity in your mind that you should seek the dream that drives you. Because when you seek a dream that drives you, work becomes a hobby. And then you do the things that you are genuinely interested in and not doing it simply because somebody else uh, has made you interested in it. So it's important that you have clarity of who you are and what is it that you want to be, because this will define the rest of your, of your, of your career. In my own case, I had set out to be a bureaucrat. I wanted to be a bureaucrat. I wanted to be an IAS officer. Uh, and then of course, more by chance, uh, more by accident than by design, I landed a job at, at, at Hindustan Lever. Uh, because the company came uh, when I was in, in, uh, in my master's degree, probably for the first time to the Delhi School of Economics. And lo and behold, I went for the interview just as a lark. Uh, and, you know, that's the other thing in life. When you are bindas about something, you always land up doing your best. And that's what happened to me. Uh, I really couldn't care a damn. I thought, you know, this is a nice interview to go to and maybe I'll get a ticket to go to Bombay and see the city as part of that. Uh, nothing more, nothing less but I landed the job. It has been 40 years since. I've had no regrets. So I'm not a, as someone asked a question, are you, do you consider yourself a disappointed individual at not being an IAS officer and rather being a corporate executive? I don't think so. I think myself as being blessed because this is the path that I was meant to follow, which I think the Almighty gently guided me towards. And that's exactly what has happened with my own life. So clarity is important. Once you are in it, then you need to be very clear about what is it that you want to achieve with it. 
and that is an important part of your journey. Next slide, please. The next is competence. You are at the finest university. You are being taught by some of the finest professors that there are. You are in a cohort of extremely bright people, extremely ambitious people, go-getting young men and women who want to make a difference to society, to lives, and also to the planet. That's what all of you are. And I commend you for it, and I admire you for it. Because your generation, Generation Z as it were, is the generation that is going to probably define the whole climate movement which has torn apart this planet in the future. The inequality, the hubris, the arrogance, the rhetoric, the sheer disdain are all characteristics that are seeping through and eating our society today. Your generation is given that task of not just improving your own lives, but also helping in the cleanup of the planet. Which really means that what we need is a lot of very competent young people, men and women. Both of you are extremely important in shaping the planet, in shaping lives, in shaping society, in shaping the way in which we conduct ourselves for the future. There is no point in gloating about a past about all the great cultural heritage that we bear as Indians. We have the finest of sciences, the finest in philosophy, the finest in aesthetics, the finest in art, the finest in music, the finest in literature, the finest in almost every walk of cultural being of humanity that you can talk about. And yet you have a situation today where coming out of this pandemic, people are suffering, people are hurting, people are devastated, people are depressed and people are uncertain. That is the reality that we face today. That reality is not going to be quelled by rhetoric. That reality is going to be changed by competence. And it is that competence that I would urge you to build in your careers and in whatever you do. You stand only by the sharpness of the sword that defines your competence. Sant Kabir, whom I'm very fond of as a poet, said 700 years ago, he said, Jati na poocho sadhu ki, Jati na poocho sadhu ki, pooch lijiye gyan, mool karo talwar ka, pada rehen do gyan. Don't ask the caste of the holy man, ask him his knowledge. Sell the sword and don't be besotted by the scabbard. Unfortunately, we are living in times where the scabbard is more becoming more important than the sword, when the jati is more becoming more important than the knowledge. But don't define your career in that way, because competence is exactly the spirit, exactly the sword that will get you from here to a brighter future. And you climb only when what you excel, you excel in what you do now. You are a young, you are an impatient, you are an ambitious generation. You want to be everything to everyone. It takes time. Nature takes time. You have to learn. You have to grow. You have to experience. You have to fall. You have to get hurt. And remember what Nelson Mandela said. Nelson Mandela said that unless you rise and get up after you fall. That is the sign of a great human being. That is what defines the human being, not the act of falling, but the act of rising up and standing up again. And that is the spirit that you need to build when you talk about competence, the ability to stand on your feet and the ability to do the right things at the right time. Excuse me. Sorry for the for the interruption. I just had to set right my battery. <clears throat> so competence is important, is something that is essential to who you are as a human being. Next slide, please.
credibility you build a lot of knowledge you build a lot of competence and yet you find yourself stumbling in the workplace stumbling when you are in a job stumbling when you are set up your own establishment because of the third important word which is credibility credibility is what defines how the other person sees you it is not how you see yourself you see yourself the word used is confidence when others see you they look at credibility here walks in mr reliable here walks in miss reliable here walks in miss sure footed here walks in mr clear here walks in the soul of performance here walks in the epitome of incompetence that's credibility and that credibility is extremely important for you to build which is being as sure as sunrise as clear as a pond with no nasty surprises if you are a good person be a good person don't try and change yourself but if you are really a little bit of a nasty person maybe you try and change yourself a bit but if you can't change yourself continue to be nasty because at least your credibility will be that this person is difficult to get along with you are clear about it yourself and also mankind is the better for it because they know how to deal with you but build this credibility this credibility is formed when you are young this credibility is formed in your university this credibility is formed amongst your cohort this is that soft chemistry this is that this is that that aroma of the place that you start to define by your coming and working it doesn't really matter 10 years from now 20 years from now whether you studied at shivnada or you studied in x y z university what matters is the competence and the credibility that you brought to the table so build this and be conscious about it be yourself there is a term that is now being rediscovered in management which is authentic leadership it is a very very big word for a very simple statement be yourself we have stopped being ourselves we want to be others we want to put ourselves in the skin of someone else and behave in a manner that is alien to the characteristics that have defined us people catch you out you're all listening to me for the last 10 15 minutes you've figured out by now is this man a fake is this man genuine does this man mean what he says or is he another big hoax coming here and blowing his pipe at on the 4th of january to all of us hapless young students who have been called upon to listen to him to figure it out very quickly it's the same when you behave people figure you out very quickly build this credibility because this credibility will stand you in good stead many years from now if you are called upon to helm an organization or indeed to helm a crisis or a difficult situation nobody is going to ask you what was your grade point average at shivnara university nobody is going to ask you were you a valedictorian or were you the gold medalist or were you the 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 chancellor's list or whatever defines academic excellence they will look at you and say is this man or woman can i trust this person to do the job trust that five letter word is extremely important and that gets built when competence is honed with credibility trust is built and therefore build credibility over a period of time build it strongly and build it well next slide please this is something unfortunately found very little on the planet we don't find it in politics we don't find it in economics we don't find it in social lives we don't find it in corporate lives we don't even find it in families this is the word courage courage is that quiet voice that says in your head there is a different way and there is a way that you can get things differently done courage is to willingness to do the things you know are right courage is the ability to stand up like a reed in the wind i will bend but i will not break 
courage is that quiet voice that says that there is a different path. And that is a path that I am willing to stake my life on. Courage is that capability that is most sought after in very difficult times. Hariyali mein tote bahut bolte hai. When things are good, everybody is a great opera singer. When things are bad, is when the rocks from the sea are seen. That's the difference between the men and the boys, the girls and the women. That is the defining moment when courage defines who you are. You've all been through and witnessed the pandemic that I hope will soon be behind us in a couple of months or whenever. What has been the defining <clears throat> moment for countries, organizations, society, groups of people who have made the shift, who have made the change, who have combated this, this pandemic extremely well, and those that have fallen flat on their face. Leadership. And what in leadership? Courage. Courage. The ability to stand by your people and say, this too shall pass. And we will do the three or four things that gets it right. And we will get from point A to point B, we will get from this terrible storm into the sunshine through these series of steps. In an unknown path, in an unknown storm, in an unknown wind, in an unknown sheet of rain, in unknown thunder and lightning, where I know that I am the weaker entity as compared to nature, and yet I make a difference. That comes, my young friends, because of courage. So cultivate this courage. Courage is not telling your boss in an organization that he is the biggest idiot who should never have been promoted. That is not courage, that is stupidity. That is a career limiting move. But courage is that quiet confidence that you can give to your boss or you can give to your team and say, guys, there is a better way and we will find that way. And here is what I think we should do about it. Not, not participating in the game is not being a great sportsman. Participating in the game and making the difference, that is being a great sportsman. And courage is that characteristic that will define the difference between participating and between a spectator in a sport. So build this, my friends. Cultivate this. Own it. Reflect on it. Analyze it. And look at the various situations in your lives when you could have exhibited a bit more of courage and you didn't. And think for yourself, why did I not do it? More often than not, you'll find some excuse. Discard that excuse and get to the bottom of what makes you not say what you would like to say. And how can you say it in a manner that you can be understood without being abrasive, or without hurting someone. I think these are important aspects of courage that you need to keep in mind. Next slide, please. Concentration. I know that I'm talking to a generation that is multitasking. Okay, you guys are, are famous for the fact that you're able to eat, drink, be on your laptop, do Instagram, uh, do Spotify, do various things at the same time, and yet be eminently successful at all. My generation, unfortunately, is generation. We were not born to mobile phones. Uh, we didn't even have a television set. So we had to go out and play. Uh, we had to mix with friends. Uh, we had to talk to parents. We had to talk to grandparents. Uh, we had to listen to, to kathas. We had to listen to various other things uh, that defined us because we didn't have the luxury of technology or the indulgence of technology uh, to give us an escape route. We could not sit in a home and not talk to our parents or to our brother and sister for three hours at a stretch looking at our six inch by three inch instrument because there was no such instrument. We were forced to talk to each other. 
we were forced to talk to parents and that's how we learned. But what is important, my young friends, in life, multitasking doesn't work. Go back to any research that has been done on effectiveness and on efficiency of organizations and of people. Time after time, it is shown that multitasking does not work because the human mind has got only that much of bandwidth in terms of what it can focus on, what it can absorb, what it can assimilate, what it can deliver, and what are the outcomes that you're looking for. So learn, my young friends, to concentrate. Focus on one thing single-mindedly and make that work for you. So if you are doing a course in math, focus on math and get that math right and make, make that define your excellence. Complete a task, complete it well, and become Mr. Excellence for it. Life's journey is not going to be a unilateral journey of progression of success. Success by material definitions will not happen all the time. It doesn't need to happen. Success needs to happen with a pursuit of excellence because that gives you an immense satisfaction saying, I have achieved something and I've done it really well. So learn to concentrate. Learn to pick up the things that you get defined for. If you are very good in, for example, music, be defined as a person who's outstanding in music. If you are an art critic, make out your capabilities to be the best that there is. That means hard work, that means practice, that means dedication, that means commitment, that means passion. That means an enormous amount of time to be spent getting that right. An Olympian doesn't become an Olympian by running a race once. How does Usain Bolt become the fastest human being on the planet? You can say, yeah, part of it is genes. Of course, part of it is genes. But a bigger part of it is because of concentration and practice. He does it, he runs, he runs every single day and makes every second count and every nanosecond count. That's why it happens. So learn to concentrate because concentration is an important element of whatever you do in good times and in bad times. Next slide, please. Creativity. Only musicians, only artists, only archaeologists, only philosophers, only dreamers are not the only people in life, in society who are creative. Everyone is creative. You are creative, I am creative. We do it in different ways. Our creativity lies in different. For some it is audio, for some it is visual, for some it is audiovisual. Uh, some are able to express themselves better than they're able to write. Some are able to write far better than they're able to express themselves. That is a nuance of nature. But creativity continues and remains. But it is unfortunately like a muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's the sad part about our creativity. So whatever you do, whether you set up your own business or whether you work in an organization, and yes, uh, somebody commented that uh, that uh, that one of the great uh, business leaders uh, defined that uh, if you work in a, in a large organization, you learn to become a bureaucrat. And if you work in a small organization, you learn to be creative. No such thing. Big organization, small organization, it does not matter. What matters is your capability at absorption, your capability at being creative, your capability of exhibiting the best that you can at all points in time. That's what defines creativity and excellence. And you learn that in a big place, you learn that in a small place. There is nothing. I've learned in all my life, I've worked in, in large organizations which have thrown challenges at me, which have put me in the deep end of the pool, put me in hot water, hung me upside down in, 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 in figuratively in different uh, difficult situations. And yet, one of the features that has helped me come out of it is courage, is competence, and is being creative. Because if you're not, then you find yourself at the deep end of the pool and sinking. And with nobody there to help you, you have to find creative ways of saving yourself. So it's important. Creativity defines the patina of excellence. When you 
are excellent at what you do. The final sheen on top exhibits itself in creativity. You're able to try different things because you're excellent in it. If you are a great musician, if you are a great violinist, you will try those movements which no other violinist will ever try because you are outstanding in what you do. You're an outstanding violinist who has pursued excellence and therefore you will be creative and add a layer to it. And that layer comes only when you have built the foundations. Remember, I talked about competence. I talked about concentration. The third layer of that is creative. So creativity will happen when you have competence and your concentration are both in sync and doing extremely well. And when all cylinders are working is when creativity kicks in. And that creativity is important in your lives. It is important in defining not just the outcome. It is equally important in defining the one word that is most important in your lives, which is happiness. You get enormous happiness when you find that you've done something, you've done it creatively, it works well. No amount of money, no amount of laurels, no amount of medals, no amount of commendation is going to take away from you that feeling of enormous personal satisfaction and happiness at doing a job and doing it well. So be creative, my young friends. This is an important part of your journey. And when you are young, you have it in your bloodstream. Your blood runs faster than mine. It runs thicker than mine. It also runs more constructively than mine, which means that creativity should be the definition of whatever you do as part of whatever endeavor you choose to do in your lives. Next slide, please. Constraints. This is that terrible C word that ruins great endeavors. 80% of all obstacles to success comes from the word constraint. Because you keep saying, I wish I could do this, but my parents didn't allow me to do it. I would have been a great runner, but you know, my legs are not uh, as strong as they should be. Uh, I could have been a great artist, but you know, I can't draw uh, straight lines for nuts. They're all constraints. These are all shackles that you've put on yourself. You're a little bit like that elephant. You know, these, these elephants which are caught for taming, they initially are put with chains onto a peg. And they try and move and they can't move. Ultimately, the chain is removed and the elephant continues to stand there and does not move because the elephant is conditioned to a constraint that there is a chain on his, on his feet. We human beings are like that. We are like chained elephants. We keep looking at constraints. Get away from your constraints. If you want to be a great pianist, go ahead and be a great pianist. If you want to be a great manager, go ahead and be a great manager. If you want to be an outstanding leader, go ahead and be an outstanding leader. Don't give excuses to yourselves because these excuses will only take away time. And sooner than later, you'll find yourself like me, well into middle age. And then you'll say, oh my God, what have I done with my life? I worked for 40 years, achieved nothing, achieved nothing. I can't think of a single day where I've had any happiness, given any happiness or got any happiness. I've been miserable. But I have been miserable because I have faced a lot of constraints. And you list out a 200 page list of constraints and a three line list of achievements. Is that a life that is worth it? I don't think so. So start now and unshackle yourself from the constraints that you're going to be defining yourself for the rest of your lives. Next slide, please. The Dalai Lama once said beautifully, the emotion that is most manifest in human beings is also the least used. And that is compassion. That is compassion. Somehow we think that compassion is a weak emotion. We somehow think that compassion means that uh, you're being robbed of something. But compassion is very simple. Compassion is being like a coconut, tough on issues, but with a heart. I've always believed that humankind is defined by compassion. I know more. And possibly the most important at this time during the pandemic. 
this is a time when no amount of corporate talk or great leadership talk or great courage is going to make a huge difference this is the time when the arm that goes out the hand that goes out when the hand that helps the hand that nurtures the hand that is compassionate is possibly the most valuable but why do we not do this why are we so hesitant in being compassionate because our role models that we set for ourselves are those who are hard headed strong men and women who probably shown less compassion in their lives so we believe that that's how life should be i can only tell you from my own experience my young friends i have never missed a target i wouldn't have got this far in an organization if i was a guy goofing off and not achieving things for the company or for society or for whatever team i was working in but i always believed that above my target above my achievement is my role as a human being and that role as a human being means that i have to be compassionate to me empathy is an essential part of the framework of leadership to me in this crisis you don't run a company but you serve a family if you look at your lives in that perspective of being able to be helpful and that is the goal i set for myself i said if i have to be anything in this world and if my epitaph has to be written one day what should it be in my case i wished and i hope that it is that he tried to help as many as he could that's the reason why i participate today in your synergies because i hope that whatever little lessons that i have learned is of use to you if this can contribute to you and to your lives it will be a life that is well spent and it will be an hour that is well spent in terms of sharing with you which means that compassion must be an essential part of your characteristic don't forsake it my friends as you become bigger as you approach the corner office as you become big human beings larger than life with lot of fame lot of name lot of fortunes you will sometimes forget the weaker the meeker people in this planet don't do that don't do that because you come with nothing you go with nothing that's what our religion tells us and that's true you came in with nothing you will go out with nothing whatever you will give will be in this planet whatever you do will be on this planet you settle your accounts here there is no afterlife where you will be settling your debit and credit balances whatever you do you do it here let compassion be on your asset side rather than on your liability side of your account and i think i would urge you to be that you can be great leaders you can be tough leaders you can be successful leaders and yet you can be compassionate leaders because as one ceo of a great company once said larry bossidy of honeywell he said you'll never be remembered for the profits you made you will never be remembered for the great revenue turnovers that you generated you will be remembered for how you made the other man feel that's all there is to leadership so don't allow yourself to be beguiled by the fact that compassion is not important compassion is important and please do this and please follow it in every day and especially in this year as we come out of the pandemic your compassion in whatever you do is extremely important to society and to that one human being who is seeking that little arm of help at that point in time next slide please continuous learning we will always assume that you have got your degree certificate you have taken your famous photographs i hope that you guys have a nice um a graduation ceremony where you will be given your degrees and you will be wearing your caps and doffing your caps unfortunately the pandemic year has not afforded that to some of your seniors but i do hope you get it but when you get this degree you put that scroll inside your cupboards remember that learning has not stopped it has just started long after shivnada university your process of continuous learning has to continue you have to contemporize yourself your generation is a very different generation from my generation the essence the core competencies will not change but the context will the role of technology the role of artificial intelligence the role of machine learning the role of uh, work from home versus work from from the workplace 
the role of uh, of, of, of of climate, of sustainability, uh, of consumer preferences, uh, of uh, of uh, digital. All of this is will be very different in your generation. But, but that means that you have to contemporize yourself at every stage of your careers of your lives. You cannot be sitting with knowledge that you got at Shivnara University 25 years ago and say this is what is going to be relevant to me. I passed out of Delhi School of Economics 40 years ago. Right, as a as a as a trained uh, uh, monetary economist, right. But monetary economics and economics has moved uh, light years after that. So if I have to be a successful economist today, I have to be contemporary in terms of my knowledge and not say that I got a degree from the Delhi School of Economics and therefore that's it. No, it's not. It's only the beginning. So there are no bounds, my young friends, to seeking knowledge. The only thing that stops you is your ego. And the ego is that you don't want to ask the question that what is this about? Because exhibiting your ignorance somehow makes you feel that, you know, I'm a lesser human being. I don't have any such hesitation. I don't allow my ego to get to me. I ask stupid questions of all my youngsters. I ask them to teach me technology because I don't know technology. I wasn't born in the mobile phone age. I am an immigrant to technology. You are all born to technology. You were born with, with, with iPhones in your home or with smartphones uh, owned by, by, by people in the family. Uh, I was even a, even a, even a landline uh, came long after I was born. So therefore, I think you have to continuously upgrade yourself. So don't stop learning. Continuously learning because learning is the best way of keeping your brains active, your bodies active and your perspectives active. Don't allow this to be just a scroll that you keep inside your cupboard and take it out and, and make photocopies of it when you have to apply for passport or apply for various other things. It should not be left to that. Continuously learn, my young friends. There is enough to learn. And what you will ever know in life, have the humility, will be a decimal of a decimal of a decimal to the probably to the millionth decimal. That's all we will ever know as human beings on what there is to learn in this planet. But learn all the same. That's important. Next slide. This is the last slide, and you see this this young Buddhist monk. He's a, he's a boy, he's a child. See the look of contentment on his face. He's not going to be seeking worldly pleasures. He's not going to have the biggest Ferrari. He's not going to have the biggest apartment. He's not going to have the biggest bank balance. He's not even going to have a set of clothes that are going to be more fancy than what he's wearing today. Maybe he gets a slightly bigger length when he grows into a man. And yet you see the happiness on his face. That, my young friends, is contentment. Contentment is the end result of all that you achieve in your life. We also use the word happiness. Contentment is not complacence. Complacence is being, as they say in the Bhagavad Gita, it's being tamasic. That is, you assume that, you know, I do a little bit of work, everything happens to me, and I'm, I'm absolutely fine. No, that's not it. It's not complacence. It is contentment. I've done my bit. I've done my share. I've taken what I needed. And I'm happy with what I have. Kabir said this beautifully. He said, Sai itna dijiye, jame kutum samaye, may bhi bhuka na rahu, sadhu na bhuka jaye. Sai, which is God, give me enough that I can eat, my family can eat, and the sadhu, the mendicant, also doesn't go hungry. In this age, when you seek greed, when you seek wealth, when you seek fame, when you seek fortune, when you seek grand-sized egos, the word contentment goes away from your dictionary. Allow it to come back to your dictionary. A content life is a happy life, is a healthier life. Because if you envy someone, I welcome you to a world where you will have three things guaranteed. Number one, you'll have the most frayed relationships around. You won't be able to get along with your spouse. You won't be able to get along with your children. Your, your son will come with an A. You'll say, why not an A plus? 
have you come first in class have you come first in the world have you come first in the university have you come first in everything that's because you were not able to do that number 2 you'll get a heart attack very quickly because you would have burnt yourself to envy at somebody else getting better in life it is good to be ambitious my young friends i was ambitious i would not have got to where i got to if i was not ambitious but i was content i realized where i ended and where i did whatever best i could and if i didn't get it i didn't get it maybe it hurt for a, for a, for a few days but after that you reconcile yourself saying that's what i'm i deserve that's what i have got because if you burn yourself with envy you burn your relationships you burn your health and ultimately you don't know the road the other person is on you have no idea you don't know what difficulties what trials and tribulations the other man or woman whom you are envying is going through what difficulties do they have you have no idea but you just look at the veneer of success defined by designation car house this that and the other and you think that that is success that is not success success is happiness happiness is contentment contentment is the look on this young child monk's face that i hope your face one day dawns because as you reflect back on your life you have more than you need in this world you have more clothes you have a larger space to live in you have more vehicles you have more money in the bank you have more jewelry in the locker you have more wealth than what you need to lead a decent life and therefore along with contentment must go the word gratitude gratitude for the many blessings that you have received in life gratitude for the fact that you are born to parents who are wise who are loving who are kind who are considerate gratitude for the teachers who have molded you who have shaped you who have got you to the state today that you are at one of the finest universities gratitude for society that has nurtured you and given you more than your fair share gratitude for the fact that you did not have to worry about the meal that came to your table or the fees that was paid into the school or university gratitude for the fact that your parents your teachers your friends and your kith and kin have stood by you through thick and thin gratitude that you are alive in this huge pandemic and that you can look forward to a future there is a lot my young friends that you can thank in this world and there is a lot of contentment that you can seek in this world it's all in the perspective that you take in your lives and i do hope that as a result of all of this you lead happy you lead healthy and you lead useful careers because there is nothing more important than the people that you work with the purpose and values that define you and the numerous partnerships that you will form along life's journey cherish your friendships cherish your partnerships cherish your old friends cherish your new friends cherish your traditions cherish cherish the happy times that you've had cherish also the trial laden times that you've had because all of this will define the perspective and the experience that will hopefully shape you into great human beings whether or not you become great leaders time will tell what you have got within your control is to be a good human being and that is all i would request you and that is all i would bless you on this day listen to me over synergens i want to thank all the staff and i want to thank professor ghosh for inviting me today for this session i do hope it has been useful to you and i'll be happy to answer any questions or any any other clarifications that you might want to have thank you all very much thank you thank you uh, i think tonight a lot of uh, messages i think my there's a two in my uh, voice can the it please correct i wanted to 
I don't think there are words each one of us can express right now. You've touched across this digital divide that we're talking in, each one of us, the number of messages on my phone, on YouTube, on uh, that you have elicited today from parents, faculty, staff is absolutely incredible. We could not have anticipated a more meaningful way to begin the academic year, this, this particular academic year, by a much by such a profound session as you've taken today. So firstly, thank you. I think Dr. Ghosh wants to say something and we have lots of questions and we have a hard shutdown with Mr. Uh, Suresh at about 11.20, but I know that Colonel Gopal and Dr. Ghosh both want to say something. Uh, actually, uh, I take the leave because 11 o'clock I have another meeting that I can't, I skipped one, but uh, this one I can't skip. <laughs> so <clears throat> it is just simply wonderful. When you came to Compassion, that see got me and uh, you know otherwise i was listening you know we know and this is coming directly from your heart it's been simply motivating very very genuine it touched your heart because you are not making a show it's just coming from what you have practiced so uh, you know i look forward to further interactions that's my only plea anu anuva uh, this was very very nice very very formal one uh, very, very nice, but uh, in this platform, there's nothing better that we could have done. Uh, and I think we look forward to further interactions, even with Nestle in general, but with him, uh, maybe even in our MBA program, uh, whenever time permits, you are in Gurgaon, right? If I am not mistaken. So, yeah. yeah, so I think we'll look forward to that. Today was simply amazing. Uh, this is, uh, you know, everybody talks about leadership. And uh, but I think uh, it's coming from the human side of it. Uh, the the things you talked about, it sort of was resonating with what uh, I have been talking about at SNU, and we tried to sort of doing it in your way. So I think it's really it would be lovely to continue this conversation. I have a couple of questions, but I'll reserve that for some time. Uh, you know, Anuva, I take your leave also, uh, Mr. Naran, and really uh, remarkable and. Uh, well, this is what I anticipated, <laughs> knowing you. And uh, so I, I hope that we keep this conversation going. And I look forward to a partnership uh, between Nestle and uh, as long as you're there and SNU. Uh, it would be really, it's a role model that you look up to, not the kind of role model you mentioned in your talk, but role model like you, we look up to and our students can then see what we are talking about. So wonderful, really, uh, very, very nice. Actually, I have taken notes after a very long time. <laughs> thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank thank so you, Professor Bush. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I take your leave, sir, and uh, we will meet soon. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Anupa, we can hear you. You are on mute. Okay. Uh, Keeping in mind that there is a hard shutdown to Mr. Narayanan's session today, uh, I now invite students to raise their hand and ask questions. Colonel Gopal, were you wanting to say something? No, I, I would just add to what Dr. Ghosh said. It was illuminating and riveting. And uh, like she said, I also made my notes on the 10 C's as part of the continuous learning. I am a year younger than uh, Mr. Narayanan, but it was such a learning experience. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Narayanan. I'm sure the 300 plus people here, plus the many on YouTube would have benefited immensely. It's been an absolute joy to hear you. Thank you so much. Uh, over thank to you, Anupa. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Kun Gopal. I will, uh, I will start reading out some questions uh, and students, you're welcome to unmute and unvideo yourself. The first question is from Anjali Pathak. I'm asking on your behalf, Anjali. Sir, could you please share a moment with us from your corporate life where you showed courage in the face of a dilemma? Uh, there are there have been moments. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, for that. Uh, for that question. Um, I think you know it happened very early in my in my career. I was um, you know running a small factory that made animal feeds uh, as part of Hindustan Lever in uh, in, uh, in the city of Ahmedabad. And uh, we were to close down that factory, and we were being asked to, to shut down the, the factory and move to a location near Baroda. 
and uh, part of that was therefore the settlement for the people and, and, and the paying off the workers. I was about, I think, 22 years old at that time, and uh, my factory workers, almost 35, 40 of them, they were all old enough to be my my dad. They were all my dad's age. My father was in his 50s then. Uh, so you know, it was it was very difficult for me, very very difficult for me, and uh, I felt very bad about it. I felt extremely pained that I had to do something like this, but that was my job, and, and therefore I kept the duty aside, and I kept the the I kept my emotions aside. And the final straw was these workers said that you know we would like to get a watch from the company. In those days there was no Titan; uh, it was HMT, uh, Hindustan Machine Tools. You guys may not even have heard of that company. It used to make uh, watches. And they wanted an HMT Janta watch, which was, I think, 150 rupees or something in those days. And uh, uh, so I asked the company, and the company said no. They said, look, we will not, uh, you know, we don't give these things when we shut down factories. It's given for people to celebrate their uh, years of service with the company. I was young, and I said, look, uh, to help with you guys, I said, look, I'm sorry, but if you are not going to pay for it, I'll pay for it, and I'll, I'll buy these 30 uh, odd watches. Little realizing that my salary was good enough to buy probably eight or nine of them, but uh, not uh, not thirty of them. Uh, so I stood up to to the head of the head of the division and I said, "Look, I am sorry, but this is really not on." And uh, then they, I think they were a bit indulgent. They also realized that uh, what they said was wasn't exactly fair, and uh, they sanctioned those watches. And I felt extremely pleased. Uh, and the workers were also extremely happy. You know, in, in fact, instead of me giving them a farewell, uh, they gave me a farewell, and they said, "Look, uh, we want to give you a farewell uh, for treating us well." <clears throat> and I think that was an early example of of, of courage that I showed. And uh, okay, I could have lost my job then, but I was I was I was convinced that what I said uh, had the conviction and had my conscience. Uh, that was uh, that was uh, pointing north. Yeah, with what I said. We, we have we have uh, request Krishnan to be unmuted. He wants to ask his question directly, uh, Mr. Narayanan. Krishnan. Okay. Hi, Krishnan. Yes, Hi. Can... Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. I was about to type it, but uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Thank you, sir. Uh, my question was in uh, one of your interviews that I saw on YouTube. Uh, I had a chance, and in that you said your team uh, had a uh, great members or uh, from IITs and IIMs uh, and even they are a part of your success. Uh, so I would, uh, my question is, how? what is that extra thing that you had uh, that you are above all of them and that made you a great leader ahead of them? I, good question, Krishnan. Uh, let, me, let me disappoint you. Uh, uh, I didn't have anything. Uh, I didn't have anything that was better than, uh, than any of these people. They were, uh, you know, I joined a company that had the, the, the the best qualified you know uh, IIT IIM was was the definition of people who joined uh, Hindustan Lever at my time and I was a plain masters uh, MA in economics right I was not even uh, I was younger than them and also didn't have the, the the qualifications I think what I what I therefore developed was what I would call the um, the the slightly underdog approach so I said I have to try harder because. I have not had the benefit of management education. I didn't even, even since then, I have not taken an MBA degree. Uh, but um, I said, I have to learn and I have to read and I have to, uh, I have to do things uh, competently and do it well. Uh, so that never will the company look at me and say, but you know, I'm seeing a difference between uh, an MBA and a non-MBA or an uh, engineer and a non-engineer. Uh, I didn't allow that as best as I could. I mean, not that I succeeded all the time, but uh, I think I have always, uh, therefore, uh, strived to try harder at whatever uh, whatever I did. Uh, but I must tell you, in all honesty, Christian, there are people who are much brighter, much more intelligent, much more uh, perceptive than what I was. And as I keep saying, uh, I think I I looked far because I stood on the shoulder of giants. And uh, these were some of the giants uh, who who allowed me to stand on their shoulder, and I'm deeply grateful for that. So honestly, nothing, nothing, nothing superior, nothing, uh, nothing significant as compared to anybody. We just uh, tried harder, worked harder, and I think uh, you know was happened to be also uh, favored and uh, and 
and uh, being at the right place sometimes also matters and i was probably blessed with that well, nothing, nothing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, Yash, before I go on to the text questions, uh, Yash Tyagi, this is your turn. You can unmute yourself and ask uh, the question directly. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for the session today. Uh, I certainly am very much influenced by the competence part that you were talking about. But uh, there's this point which comes in one's life where uh, failure acts as a constant resistance in in what we believe our aim is. So uh, my question is, does one keep on changing fields or does one keep on uh, grinding in the very same arena to achieve what they thought of regardless uh, of the number of failures they go through? And how does one pertain to that courage uh, despite of the difficulties they're facing? Very good question, Yash. I think I think you, are, you know failure is part of life. And then uh, let me let me <clears throat> assure you that uh, that I've had my fair sh uh, shares of failures in life. I'm, I'm not being, uh, you know, unidimensionally successful. Sometimes, you know, we like to portray that because I'm the chairman and managing director of a large company that I must have been successful all the time. No, I've not been. I've had my fair share of failures. But one of the things that failure uh, teaches you is uh, failing to succeed uh, teaches you how to succeed to succeed. Uh, you know, you learn more from failures than you learn from successes. Successes... Uh, everything is done well, everything is happening, everything is great, everything is good, and you don't really know uh, what made it successful. But, but when a thing fails, you know everything, every aspect of it, from the, uh, the from the, uh, the the product to the process to the service to the organization to the leadership to everything, you are able to, 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 uh, to dissect. And I think, therefore, failure is a far better teacher uh, than success is. But your pursuit in in a particular direction would depend a lot on whether that is what you are really interested in doing. So, for example, you know, uh, my father always wanted me to be an engineer. You know, he said, you know, you should go to IIT and go you know, because he himself was an engineer. But you know, I, I realized that I didn't have the neither the interest nor the aptitude. Uh, neither was I very math in my in my orientation. So. I, I honestly, I, I said, look, uh, you know, Dad, I'll I'll keep bashing my head at engineering, but uh, I will fail, and and I will continuously fail because I'm just not interested in it. I don't think I'm a great engineer, uh, and I think it's the same uh, applies to your question as well. Uh, if you are bashing at something that really doesn't grip you, uh, really doesn't get you, you are there because of uh, peer pressure, uh, parental pressure, or whatever pressure. Then I think it's time for you to put your hand up and say. Sorry, mate, that's about all I can do. I need uh, a change of scene. I need to do something else. But that's provided you are not in the right field. But if you are in the right field and if you're failing, then uh, intrinsically look at yourself as to why you are, you are, you are failing. What is it that is pushing you back? Uh, look at it very calmly, dispassionately, and, and very objectively. And maybe you'll find the answers for why you are not able to do uh, what, you are, uh, what you want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Kabir, uh, would you like to ask your question now? Kabir Madan, would you like to unmute? Would you like to yeah, sure, ma'am. Thank you. Um, thank you for the wonderful talk, sir. So my question is that you know you're in the position of a leadership of leadership in the global company, and uh, in that in such a position, obviously you have to take uh, account of multiple stakeholders in uh, any situation. Um, how important have been social movements or movements led by students or youth in any country in the past couple of years? We've seen many of them or labor movements. How important have they been in your career as you attempt to shape or to reform business policies or business initiatives or plans? And how much attention have you had to pay to them? Look, I think I think it's a good question. Uh, very good question, Kabir. I think what 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 a professional uh, a professional manager let's say like me has to be first um, faithful to uh, is to your own conscience and to the cause of the organization and to the purpose of the organization i think that is that is extremely important uh, if you are not wedded to the purpose of the organization or if you are not uh, passionate about your own uh, what your conscience says then you should not be in that uh, in that uh, in that profession. 
uh, and I think sometimes the the movements that you talk about, um, uh, you know, I was in I was in Egypt uh, for five years during the Arab Spring, and, and that was a that was a students' movement and a very very strong uh, students' movement. Uh, so I think what the organization did was, it is not for the organization to start uh, becoming, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of the Arab Spring themselves. Because uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, as an organization, you are there to serve a purpose, which is a purpose to the consumers. But what you do is, you you then uh, look at your behaviors, look at your systems, look at your practices, which should not be obviating or should not be uh, uh, going against uh, any of the principles that people who are there fighting for a cause uh, are standing for. So I think what you do is you try and modify your behavior. If your behavior is, is, is deviant uh, or you try and, and reinforce your behavior, if your behavior is uh, in, in consonance with what is being, uh, being done, but you don't start uh, shaking the tree uh, simply because uh, a movement is is, is is happening. Because a movement can happen for different reasons. And uh, it may not be necessarily to do with uh, the way your organization is structured or, 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 or contributing. Uh, but if you think that uh, what is being said in a labor movement or in a, in a, in a student's movement or indeed in any social movement uh, is relevant and is a cause that you need to embrace as a company, uh, then you need to do it. Now, uh, to give you an example, things like sustainability, for example, is is something that is a, a endemic to the purpose of the company. So it's not that the purpose of the company is at uh, crossroads uh, with, with sustainability. Now, are we able to find all the solutions? Uh, uh, sadly, Kabir, no. We are not able to find all the solutions. Some we are able to find, some we are not able to find, some are not commercially viable, but we continue to try. But do we listen to it? Yes, we do listen to it. But can I change my 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 uh, behavior uh, 180 degrees? Maybe different and maybe difficult. So I think it is it is important for for companies to take into account what is happening in the environment, but they have to work towards their purpose and their conscience, and not try and become messiahs of social movements. Uh, I think we have to be very careful. There is only that much that you will give credence to a Nestle for. But if I start talking about things that you say, hey, but you know, why are you guys talking about it? It's not, it's none of your business. Uh, I need to be able to be able to, to be sensitive to that and say, yeah, but Kabir would like me to talk about X things. But if I'm going to talk about other issues, he's going to say, you know, thank you, my friend, but you know, you're not the guy I look up to uh, for these issues. So I think, I think companies have to know that they are not God and they don't play God, but they are human beings. And that they run, you know, groups of human beings. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kavi. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Narayan, next two questions I'm going, going to merge. Uh, they are somewhat connected in some ways. So first is from Harshwardhan. Harshwardhan feels that the import what is the importance of having a management education? His parents do talk about the importance of degrees when it comes to a faster career progression, especially management management uh, degrees. But he also feels that corporate leaders or gurus also denounce a ma management question. That's one part of the question linked to uh, management education and hiring, which I'll link it up. It's a Meghna's question. Also, it was great to have the opportunity to attend such an enlightening session. My question is, you said that a GPAs won't matter in our careers after some time, she agrees with you, but she feels that there are companies who define uh, who define the college I am MDI TIS and marks that they're looking for in a candidate. So both those questions uh, over to you. We are bombarded by questions. Yeah, sure. So we can we can go on till Anubha till eleven thirty. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Fifteen minutes more, you can you can go ten minutes more. I don't have an issue. Look, I think it's a very good question and. Uh, uh, you know, ultimately, my young friends, whether you want to take a management degree or not, uh, depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, because one thing is, is, is if you do a degree because you think that it is a boarding card uh, to a to a job, 
uh, then you will apply you will your application and your commitment to it will only be that much whereas if you think that management education uh, and here again the quality of that institution is 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 extremely important uh, in terms of the kind of education that they give not the not whether it is iim or non iim i honestly believe that that is not the uh, the criteria that uh, that young people uh, should use uh, and if you believe that the quality of the management education or the perspectives that you get will be useful for you in life only then uh, go ahead and do a management degree don't do a management degree in the belief that this will help me to get a 50 lakh ctc or it will help me get a get x y and z uh, benefit in an organization because that may or may not happen uh, I, I, I i sincerely believe it uh, look don't look at me as an example my generation was different i managed to make myself a, a pretty decent career not having done an mba uh, but i won't say that you know i am the the kind of role model that you need to see as far as uh, education uh, uh, and or the or the or the or the lack of it is is concerned uh, you do it if you really think that this is something that will add value to you as an individual and also as a as a professional uh, i do agree with uh, megra's question that uh, yes unfortunately uh, the the industry is getting defined by uh, by uh, by brand names uh, Uh, i try and you know i try and fight it within my own organization i keep telling my people that look you need to you know i've, I've been successful in in widening the 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 base in fact one of the reasons why we recently announced uh, you know nestle had 1000 internships during the pandemic uh, called nesternships that we had announced uh, it was open to all uh, all graduates uh, post graduates uh, professional degree holders etc um Uh, to come and do a one month internship at at, at Tesla paid for uh, but a virtual internship because we couldn't uh, we couldn't get people on the on the uh, you know on our sites uh, and we had uh, we had uh, people 1000 uh, we had 91000 applicants for 1000 uh, nesternships and these represented uh, you know the length and breadth of the country as a result of this my team and it is not because i said so my team has identified 150 to 200 of them who could potentially be uh, be employed by the company and uh, these are not from the iims these are not from the from the so called branded uh, schools as it were uh, because i always believe that uh, you know irrespective of um, you know just as you would find really top class material at an iim uh, you will also find top class material at a less well known uh, institution uh, the question is have you Uh, searched hard enough and uh, and uh, diligently enough to find that uh, find that caliber and uh, i think i think uh, i think it's 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 true that uh, companies need to open their eyes a lot more to it uh, i'm trying to to the best of my ability uh, but also you know sadly what happens is that organizations like mine uh, even when i go to an iim i am flooded with applicants so you know the the tragedy is uh, so many apply for uh, for the for the company uh, in i'm saying tragedy is, is good for the company but tragedy from the point of view of getting more diverse in the in, in the business schools is because uh, of the kind of uh, premium that is uh, paid to getting experience or working in in these organizations uh, in ethical honest um, uh, and in professional circumstances uh, that uh, that people want to uh, want to apply for it but i do agree that uh, over a period of time we'll have to uh, start debunking this uh, theory that uh, only the top 10 business schools have the best uh, talent in the country thank you thank you um, nimish batra you can unmute yourself and ask a question quickly we are running short of time uh, yes shonan sure, uh, thank you so for this wonderful talk uh, my question is uh based on the build, on building meaningful habits now uh, since we're again in a very fast paced dynamic uh, environment right now especially with the pandemic what what process do you take in order to create uh, meaningful habits to attain uh, goals that you have in mind in the future look i think um, you know for me at this at this juncture in this pandemic uh, there are really three p's that are that are extremely important uh, the purpose of the organization 
and to ensure that everyone in the company understands what we stand for as a company. Uh, what are our purpose? What are our values? That's what a leader can, can add. I don't do an active uh, job of selling or marketing or, or, or producing or any of those. I'm like the orchestra conductor. I know the music uh, and yet I don't make a sound. Uh, the sound is made by everyone uh, who's around me. So really focusing on the purpose and values is extremely important uh, because that's what will see you through a pandemic, uh, through a difficult situation far more than anything else. The second is by people. I think, I think people are, 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 are front and center of a successful organization. And I really believe that uh, uh, focusing on people, their safety, their well-being, uh, you know, we are fortunate as a company. I think you know, I've, I've been blessed uh, the fact that even during the Maggie crisis and even today, I have not retrenched anyone. Nobody's salaries have been cut. Uh, everyone has got their bonuses, has got their benefits, have got their uh, their rewards. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm really blessed. Uh, that I've not had to be um, to to take the wheel the axe on any of these uh, these issues. At the same time, you know we do have the challenges, uh, younger people, uh, issues in working from home. I think a, a general sense of despondency. Uh, you know you see so much of grief around uh, that that people even even occupied and and secure people start feeling insecure. Uh, and I think it's a part of our leadership job is to try and reach out with mechanisms uh, to help people to cope. So I think on the people front, we're doing a fair amount of, of, of initiatives. And the third is partnerships. I think one of the things that's very important, you know, Nestle is, has got a large ecosystem. I mean, I've got 100,000 dairy farmers uh, whose milk I've been collecting for every single day during the pandemic. Uh, even though we didn't need all that milk, we took all that milk because we said uh, it's 60 years of trust and you can't allow 60 years of trust uh, to be decimated uh, in a pandemic. Uh, I have uh, beet farmers, I have spice farmers, I have uh, six to 7,000 suppliers, uh, almost 700 suppliers who are what I call MSMEs, daily small ones. So I think uh, ensuring that we protect people like a banyan tree does, uh, with people who stand under its shade, is the role that, uh, that a corporate plays. Uh, it's not about you yourself. It's not about the, uh, the, 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 the business of the company. It's a business of everybody else. And how can you help them? So purpose and values, people, partnerships, for me today, come before profits. Before profits. Because profits follows. If you do all this well, profits will happen. The value chain is not going to run away. The brands are strong. The consumer uh, continues to respect and love us. And it's not that you know I have to to stand on my head and to convince you that Maggie is a great product or Kit Kat or Nescafe is a great product. I mean, you all have it, you all love it, and and I'm 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 uh, ever grateful for that. If I do the other three things right, the business results follow, and that's what I keep telling people: focus on these two or three important things, and the business will follow. That was a <laughs> Mr. Dharan, merge two last question. They are very important. Sure. Sure. So, uh, Saurabh is asking, from time to time, we know we have setbacks and we come past through it. And as a leader, how did you come past through them? And how did you, more than anything, how did you pull your team? Can you share one experience? I'm clubbing this with Ananya's question. When you're in a leadership position, how do you maintain the balance between the intent and impact of your decisions? And this will be the sure. last question. I think I think it's a it's a very good question uh, uh, that uh, Anina is asking. Um, what 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 you have to remember very simply as a leader, you are paid for the outcomes. You are not paid for popularity. A leader should be respected, but not necessarily loved. You are not there for a for a or building a love affair with the with your with your uh, with your, uh, with your subordinates you are there to earn their respect but you are there to be fair to be firm to be resolute to be passionate to be committed and to be trustworthy at all points in time so leadership is an act of getting respect it is not a popularity contest seeking love that is when your impact and intent gets very clearly defined. 
you have a certain impact there is a certain intent the intent is defined by whatever is the goal that that you have you have set for yourself the impact on the employees is something that could be either happy or not so happy your employees must turn around and say this man was tough but he was fair this decision was painful but it was inevitable this person's act was rough but his intentions were clean rather than i love this guy i hate this guy uh, i'm ambivalent to this guy you know those are not important in leadership over a period of time you know it's a bit like leadership is a little bit like parenting you know for those of you i mean you'll all get to be parents one day so maybe it's it's, it's putting the cart before the horse but in parenting you have to be uh, the tough parent and you have to be the loving parent the child never says i can't trust my parent the child never says i will not respect my parents but the child will go through different ages when they might or might not love your their parents you know when when you are a teenager for example uh, parents are an embarrassment right you don't want to have your parents around because you know they they are somehow fuddy duddy and they're not they're not cool and they're not they're they are spying over whatever i am talking to whom i'm talking to where i'm talking to right but when they come into their 20s they become your friends because suddenly they find that they also need an emotional support and who better than parents in your life to provide that so leadership is a bit like that and i think i think it's important for uh, for uh, for uh, for uh, defining that just repeat uh, saurav's question uh, anuba what was saurav uh, asking so what is about you share some experience on the setbacks that you've had and how you've pulled yourself and your team along with you yeah look i think i think you know when i I've, i've had i've had numerous setbacks uh, saurav so therefore you know i am uh, i uh, walking albatross and you know, i keep i keep getting into trouble or falling into trouble you know so therefore that's uh, that's part of my my career or my 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 uh, track record as it were uh, i think i think the the example 5 years ago here uh, when i when we had the the, the famous uh, uh, baggy issue uh, was 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 an existential threat for the companies it was very different from the pandemic you know pandemic everybody was in, uh, in hot water Uh, in the maggi issue i was the one who was in hot water and i think uh, some of the things that uh, we learned i, I talked about uh, people purpose and partnerships uh, that's exactly what we did uh, we we went back to the purpose of the company uh, to the values of the company uh, that we were an ethical honest uh, uh, company for whom food quality and safety was uh, number one and that's what we respectfully put forward in front of the authorities even after we got banned uh and uh, then we came back and uh, i think because we were resolute in it and because of the love that the consumers had in all of you i'm sure sort of you consume maggi but you know if you guys didn't love the brand there's no hope in hell uh, of me to have come back to leadership uh in in 3 months after being dead for 6 months uh, i'm the only example in consumer marketing in this country probably in foods where a dead brand came back alive to to leadership in uh, in 3 months flat so it's a it's a it's a marketing uh, case study uh, but that really happened because we focused on people we focused on on purpose and we focused on partnerships you know we have numerous distributors numerous suppliers and uh, numerous people um, uh, who have uh, been part of this organization and who vouch for the culture of the organization and the purpose of the organization and they brought it together and i think the leader has to has to keep strong you see the the, the job of a leader is to ask the right questions but never to know the answers if a leader knows all the answers then he is no longer a leader then he is a you know then he is a computer a leader needs to be able to ask the right questions to elicit the answers that help in providing light to the organization and a leader's only task is to give hope in difficult times to give hope what what is it that i can do you know i can't change this pandemic i can't change the way in which uh, in which uh, in which uh, the, the 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 case rates are going to be increasing or decreasing i can't do anything about the the mortality rates i can't do anything about when the vaccine will come will not come will be given will not be given 
what can I do? Remember that you are a simple human being. And the only thing that a human being can give at that point in time, and, and your team looks at you because uh, you know you are the leader, is hope. Guys, don't worry, we'll come out of this. We'll come out of this strong one day. We will see the sunshine. We are seeing the clouds today, but we'll see the sunshine. We will do better things. We will hug each other. Uh, we will hold hands. We will do the things that we were doing. Uh, give yourself some time. Give ourselves some time to allow things to settle. That's all that a leader does. That's all. And if a leader thinks that you are bigger than God, that you know all the answers, that you know all the questions, that you know everything about everything, I mean, if you know it, then great. Then you should be God. Then you should be a leader. Uh, but most of us, unfortunately, don't have that capability. Wow. What, a, what an amazing thought today's session on. Mr. Narayan, you, I'm sure you can make out from the number of questions which are coming your way that this session can probably last for one or two more hours and what a welcome you're going to get eventually when you come to our beautiful campus and meet our absolutely brilliant, I know I'm very biased towards them, they are my students. So when you come to campus, you will realize that they are an energetic bunch of students. You will get tired with the number of questions you have. I could not have imagined a better start to this year for my students, for the faculty, for all of us working here at the university. Thank you so much for the incredible time. You've given us gifts for 2021, which are most valuable, whether it's intent, whether it's integrity, whether it's passion, whether it's compassion with its clarity. I cannot thank you enough sure for enough. giving us as a gift today. Thank you so much for the amount of time and it can go on and on. But thank you, Mr. Narayan. Thank you so much for, on behalf of all our students. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Anubha. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you all uh, to all my young friends. Uh, I can sense the enthusiasm. I can sense the the commitment, I can sense the intelligence and the maturity of all of you by the questions that you ask. And uh, yes, I do feel sad. I, I love these interactions one-on-one uh, -on -one and I, I love it in, 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 uh, in talking to, to, to all of you in person. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not the situation today. But uh, God willing, uh, I will get to uh, do the Shivnada University campus uh, someday, thanks to the invite that uh, Anubha and Professor Ghosh have, have given me. And uh, I just want you to keep your chin up, to be positive, uh, to look at life as a, as a bouquet. Uh, you will have the flowers and you'll have the thorns. And uh, to never give up on yourself and never give up on self-confidence and never give up on hope. Because these are the things uh, that have made mankind survive uh, for all the millennia that we've been on the planet. Thank you all very much. God bless you all and uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for your wonderful team for supporting us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.